welcome to the Fisio Days panel. Uh, today we'll be covering the uh, Chugrai party politics landscape yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, we'll be covering uh, what's happening in Chugrai recently, and we'll go back in history, and hopefully we'll also uh, foresee what is coming in the coming weeks and uh, months. So today, um, Delightfully joined by the same panel uh, that we had yesterday, Meret Abdurabruk, Abraha Bellai, and Mercy Kidana. Welcome again. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So we'll start uh, with, the, with the highlight of the week for each of the panelists, as usual. I will start with uh, Mehrtab. Mehrtab, uh, what stood out for you? Hello again. Uh, thank you, everyone, and my compatriots here. Uh, what stood out last week was in uh, Ethiopian politics. Uh, uh, we have seen the scheduled rally for today uh, morning by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was effectively aborted by Abiy Ahmed. Uh, and it looks like it has created some confusion within the uh, Ethiopian Orthodox uh, followers and uh, those who were ready to take part in the in the rally. Uh, another point that stood out for me was uh, President Isaias Afor case last week, uh, Nairobi visit, where he was faced by journalists and asked very critical questions. And we have seen him uh, very embarrassingly dodging the questions. Uh, and uh, the, the, those two points stood out for me this week. I apologize for that. Uh, it, uh, thank you, Merata. I think both of them, uh, especially the Isaiah Safroki one, would be relevant to the topic we will be talking about today. Uh, okay, uh, Abraham, what what was the highlight for you over the past seven days? Well, the uh, thank you. First of all, thank you very much. Um, the major highlight, as Maharatab uh, mentioned, was the tumultuous um, situation among the churches in Ethiopia, uh, nationwide um, kind of boycott and protest was called by the church. But uh, the uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has uh, diffused the explosive, what could have been a very explosive situation in the country and what could have actually been maybe maybe a factor to bring about the downfall of his uh, regime so he was smart enough to invite the church leaders and you know persuade them to to call off otherwise they would also face the consequences so that was the major um, groundbreaking issue uh, that shook the whole country. Uh, when it comes back to Tigray, uh, uh, there is uh, a very grim situation in Tigray as well. Um, a meeting called by one of the opposition uh, groups in Tigray, uh, in the Tigray, was called off, uh, you know, was cancelled, forcefully cancelled uh, by TPLF. Uh, although we know that according to the Pretoria uh, Agreement, uh, Tigray still runs without any government, but TPLF is single-handedly acting against the law, against an agreement that it signed and has has uh, violated its own agreement to work with other stakeholders in Tigray, um, you know, to move about 
for the formation of an interim administration. But before everything else, uh, the group TPLF has even denied, you know, what could be its potential partner in the interim and the formation of the interim administration. Were not that they cannot hold a public meeting. This was another um, highlight uh, as to me, and thank you. Thank you, Abraham. We will uh, again come back to the uh, TIP, Tigra Independence Party uh, public meeting that was banned uh, by authorities in Mabala. Uh, Merci, uh, what about you? Uh, you are muted, I guess. Uh, thank you, Getacho. I would like to say uh, hello to everyone uh, and to listeners. Uh, I think my uh, friends uh, here with us mentioned or highlighted many of the key highlights of the, the week. Uh, this event that uh, Tigran uh, authorities in Ma'ala um, prevented from uh, a public meeting uh, happening uh by the tigra independence party that was a highlight for me uh, it is an indication of the desire to continue the repressive system that tplf has imposed on the people of Tigray. uh that was one it's not only this event that was ca cancelled or prevented from happening uh before that a week ago i believe uh, it's a week ago there was another event by non-political organization by a civic organization called Hara Events uh, to invite the public for a public discourse about political change and other things. Uh, this event was also uh, um, cancelled by the uh, security forces in Marala. Uh, so this is uh, in general an indication of the desire to continue uh to impose the repressive system that tplf has built uh i think all of us should fight and uh stop this from uh continuing uh this way but the two events were uh highlights for me okay great uh, i think uh one of the reasons we want to talk about uh this topic is related to the banning of these uh, two meetings. Uh, one of them uh, actually happened at a later date. And the one that we are seeing on the screen, uh, which was from uh, yesterday, that is by the Tigray Independence Party. So the topic we, talk, we selected for today is Tigray's party politics landscape yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I want to start with Minaratav uh, in terms of painting the picture for us. Uh, what does the political ecosystem, the party politics ecosystem look like today uh, in terms of parties? Uh, maybe for those who are following us, they repeatedly hear about TPLF, which is a ruling party. And we covered that topic last week outside TPLF. We mentioned also one party now, the TIP, the Tigray Independence Party. So what is your take on uh, how the uh, party politics in Tigray looks like as we speak today, Maratab? Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> there was uh, an interesting meeting today, uh, the, the, the committee that is uh, supposed to establish the interim government has called the, the opposition parties for discussion today. Uh, uh, after that discussion, the, the opposition party leaders, some of them, uh, have given their comments about, uh, about the meeting. That will tell you where these opposition parties are standing right now. And also there is this uh, call for the opposition parties to get united to be one so they can be strong against TPLF, uh, which I don't believe is a good idea because uh, we, can, we can call them for to have for some kind of cooperation, 
among them, but we really have to underline that these parties have different agendas, uh, different outlooks on the Tigrayan uh, politics, and we really need that variety. But uh, as to cooperation, it is very important. So as I said earlier, what happened today in the meeting uh, with a committee that is supposed to establish the transitional government, we have seen commentaries by leaders from Baitona and um, and uh, uh, Salsayo Yane from Baitona, the leader, uh, uh, Dr. Sagaza uh, We We have seen him painting a very positive kind of uh, 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 atmosphere from the meeting. And we also have seen uh, Hayal Godafai, the leader of uh, Salsai Uyane, who is very cautious, not only cautious, who didn't want uh, the, that uh, this be a news. Uh, he posted on, on, on social media that uh, they are not supposed to make this a news because he believes uh, TPLF is going to take advantage of this meeting showing that oh, we are all working together and uh, he doesn't want to paint uh, uh, that picture in, in, in his viewer. But uh, going to the comment and the reaction they received uh, from, uh, from the, the audience or uh, from uh, the grand uh, waters, we can say, uh, was uh, on one hand, uh, to, to Hayalus, if, if you don't want to make this a news, you shouldn't be there to begin with. And on the other hand, uh, whether you have to make a, a, a very clear statement where you stand regarding this, or you can go there and uh, claim not to make this a news. Uh, a lot of people are uh, kind of pushing back about the positive picture uh, Dr. Sagaza from Baitona tried to paint, uh, uh, and, uh, and they see it as an endorsement because, uh, as my belief, all the political parties were uh, asking, including others, uh, Mercier's uh, uh, CSO organization included, they were asking for an inclusive, including the process of adding this committee or uh, electing who is going to conduct uh, the, what happens to the transitional government. Because by now, what happened is TPLF has elected last week, it was announced on by uh, the Communication Bureau of the GRAI, uh, that they have set up this committee to, to kind of uh, uh, set up the transitional government. And uh, all the parties was, were requesting for the for this even committee, whether to have it or to have another form, they all to be consulted from the beginning. So they see this one as uh, a call to just cooperate with TPLF, and they don't want to be seen as uh, as endorsing whatever TPLF is doing. They wanted to take part as 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 partners, and everybody having. Uh, equal participation in the process included. So uh, that that's where I, I, I see this opportunity, the, the reaction to the meeting uh, that was conducted today uh, as showing clearly where these parties stand regarding the, the, the politics in Tigray. Thank you. Uh... Maratab, for our viewers, uh, this is the meeting that was uh, held today. And uh, from left to right, we have the uh, chairperson of the Tigray Independent Party, Grmai Berha, and uh, committee member, you can correct me, is one of the generals, I guess, uh, next to him. And then uh, it's the uh, Baitona National Congress Party chair, uh, Zagaza, who posted this. We had a preliminary discussion with members of what's called IRA, I think Interim Regional Administration Establishment Committee. Uh, some of them appear to have a good understanding of what should be done. We will see where this will take us as a starter. It was a nice discussion. And then you have uh, um, another member of the uh, Establishment Committee, 
Michael Mulwark was the chair of the uh, election commission that was held in 2020. And then we have uh, General Tadessa Warada, who is also part of the committee, and Hagos Gordapai, who is also part of the committee. And then the chair of Salsa Iwayana, uh, Hayalu Gordapai, and another general, uh, I can't name, uh, I don't know his name, but he's member of the committee, I believe. You can correct me, uh, Mercier and others out there. The one we saw before that was the uh, comment uh, that Meratab alluded to, that's from the Salsa Iwayana. I will come to Mercier. Um, in terms of party, at least if we are looking at the election of 2020, uh, there were a number of other parties that took part. Uh, maybe not uh, uh, a lot, but we have the TPLF, the ruling party, and we had uh, Baitona, Salsaiwayana, TIP, and Asimba. And Arana, Arana didn't uh, take part in that election, uh, but it's, for, uh, it's part of the ecosystem as well, the political ecosystem as well. So uh, the same question, where, where, where are we in terms of looking at from one party, only one political party, uh, you know, uh, prevailing in to drive for 27 plus years, and now we have these parties but people are still, especially today, the past few days, there was a lot of discussion on social media. Merci, what is your reading of what, what, what was happening over the past few days? Uh, first, I think it's uh, good to start with the context, understanding uh, the background, the history behind it. Uh, TPLF uh, led the popular struggle of uh, the people of Tigray uh, that we call Kalaiwayana, uh, Weha, or in English, uh, the Second Revolution. Uh, so TPLF led that uh, popular struggle and uh, came victorious in 1991. Just like many of the revolutionary parties at the time, TPLF, as soon as it took power, TPLF and its uh, uh, three uh, sister parties formed the EPRDF, Ethiopian People uh, Revolutionary Democratic Front, and uh, took control of Addis, the capital of Ethiopia, and imposed a one-party state. It is very important to understand that. It's not only TPLF that imposed one-party state. Most of the revolutionary parties uh, at the time in their respective countries, they imposed one party state. So TPLF is just another party, another Marxist party that imposed the same principle on the people. More importantly, in Tigray, TPLF imposed the most controlled one party system. Actually, in other regional uh, states, uh, there were a relative, uh, relatively better space for other political opinions and other political parties to uh, to exercise their rights. But in Tigray, it was highly controlled, and it was uh, one. It, it is a one-party state. So uh, TPLF uh, finds it difficult to. Uh, live in or to play in a democratic system. Uh, and it's visible in uh, how it acts as uh, Tigrans try to exercise their rights uh, and to conduct any kind of political discourse. TPLF uh, effectively try to, uh, tries to effectively uh, 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 destroy that. And that's what we saw when they stopped uh, Tigray Independence Party from having their public meetings, when they stopped Hara events from holding that public uh, meeting to have political discourse. Uh, so uh, it's with this consideration that we should see the political space. And TPLF is accustomed to 
controlling the state apparatus and using the state resources as its own. A simple example would be last week, 600 of higher leaders of TPLF gathered using state resource, using state uh, cars and trucks, using state owned uh, uh, public uh, uh, space and spending millions in, for, for the event. When I say millions, it's uh, state money, state owned money. It's the party that does this to have its own meeting that is denying uh, a, another political party to have a meeting in a, in a hotel. It's very uh, disappointing. And I think every Tigrayan should say enough is enough. This has to stop. We cannot continue like this in the 21st century. So this old uh, uh, paradigm of the one party state rule will have to end today. And TPLF should give all the resources that it's using to the, the uh, regional state, the regional administration, including effort, the endowment fund for rehabilitation of Tigray, which mobilizes billions of per or billions of dollars. Rest, Relief Society of Tigray should be immediately transferred to the state. Ownership, effort should be immediately transferred to state ownership. All other resources that TPLF accumulated in the name of the people of Tigray should be transferred to the people of Tigray. That means to the state, to the state administration. So uh, TPLF uses not only government resources, but all the financial uh, assets that it accumulated in the name of the, the people of Tigray to uh, impose its one party uh, state or not, not, not one party system. And this has to stop. And the way it can stop is first by transferring all the resources that are that should be owned by the people of the Gray to the state. And TPLF should work with other parties as one among, not the only party. And uh, with respect to the newly formed committee that the, that's supposed to uh, uh, lead, lead the process of establishment of the interim regional admi administration. This is a continu continuation of TPLF's uh, one party system. So in the committee, they, there are three TPLF members, three military leaders, and three supposedly non-partisan people. Why is it TPLF? Why is it uh, why is it that TPLF has three representatives and no other party has a representative in the committee? What kind of reasoning can TPLF give for this? So this is not acceptable. It's so shameful for the people like uh, Mr. Mulwark to accept this and to continue as if it's appropriate. They should voice, they should speak up and say, why is it only TPLF that sends representatives in this committee? If there is a political party, then all the political parties should have representatives. Otherwise, neither TPLF nor other parties should have any representatives if it is supposed to be non-partisan. So uh, we will uh, continue to push for that change to come. And uh, the parties, some of them are showing some optimism, uh, as uh, my brother Meherat have said. Some of them are show, showing uh, being very cautious. And that's a correct thing to do, to be very cautious about the process. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marcia, for that.
maybe Abraha, uh, as uh, our viewers would remember from our last week's show and uh, those who have followed you for maybe over 20 years, you have been a very vocal critical of the, the TPLF um, and you have, uh, I think, had uh, enough uh, good time in terms of explaining that. So if what is your reading? Okay, the TPLF now uh, even being criticized here by the panels and uh, that's what is dominantly, uh, you know, have been uh, going on over the past week as well. So if, if we were to look at the, uh, you know, existing opposition parties, we have the South Saiwayana, we have the uh, National Congress of uh, Great Tugray, uh, and then we have the Tugray Independent Party, and Arana Tugray for Democracy and uh, Sovereignty. And we have a Simba Democratic Party. What is your reading of, um, in terms of your critics, as far as I remember, has been related to the interests of Tigray, uh, specifically and uh, in general to the uh, uh, interests of uh, the, the national interests of Ethiopia and so on. So, if we focus on Tigray, how do you how do you gauge the current landscape uh, political party uh, party politics landscape in terms of the interest of the people of today Abraham. Uh, thank you very much um tpla uh, it's better to go back to its in, uh, since inception it has been a very repressive uh, organization it has engaged and wiped out a number of uh, about half a dozen organizations and earlier in its in the earlier years of its formation, for instance, like the EPRP, the EDU, um, and the earlier uh, TLF, Tigray Liberation Front, many other organizations were vanquished uh, by this organization, uh, which grew uh, its muscles, uh, which uh, emboldened and it, which flexed. Uh, its muscles over any conceived or real uh, political opponent. So uh, TPLF is uh, an organization that shouldn't have existed to this very day uh, because in earlier years, the crimes it committed was uh, had earned it the name of Khmer Rouge, like the Cambodian, the brutal Cambodian political uh, organization of Pol Pot, because TPLF had wiped out so many Tigrans, gallant, you know, very patriotic uh, Tigrans, including who were members of TPLF itself. So it has come over the years uh, when it assumed power in 1991 after overthrowing the Dirk. It uh, format of uh, the Oromo organization, the Amhara, and uh, others, uh, the Southern, uh, in order to um, give itself a legal uh, kind of semblance of legality so that it can reign over the whole, the entire Ethiopia. But as we know, the three uh, or coalition members of the EPRF were always under, um, you know, they had their own freedom, but they were overall under the command of TPLF. Uh, TPLF is an organization, even if that wipes out its own members. If we had a, a gone back like about 20 years following the Eritrean war, in, which ended in 2000, there was uh, a split uh, within the TPLF leadership itself. So uh, it was brutal. It, it just wiped them out. It was not a split. Uh, some people wrongly understand it as if TPLF was divided into two groups. No. What happened is the TPLF, the then leader of the TPLF, Malda Zenawi, wiped out his rivals practically. You know, he jailed all those who were hard 
to be jailed. He killed many conceived or real supporters of the so-called the CA Gabra uh, Asrat group. Many even commissioned officers were killed in prison. Um, those themselves, like CA, like Gabra Asrat, told etc., were defranchised as non-citizens. They had no pension rights whatsoever, no, no nothing. They were uh, defend, left for on for their themselves. You know, they were relying, depending on their family members to survive, even for food, for shelter, you know, clothing, etc. Th therefore, this shows TPNLF is a brutal leadership, a brutal group that knows no democracy. Now, it signed an agreement, which is a total surrender in Pretoria, saying that there is no such uh, government, and it is the TPLF signed an agreement to be one of those that would create the interim uh, administration. What we see on the ground now in Ma'ala is totally different. It's very, very scary. Opposition members are being, again, haunted. They are being denied any, any services. Like, they are being threatened with prison. Um, those hotel owners, they are being threatened that if they rent their conference hall to op any opposition group that they will be thrown into jail. What does all these signs tell us? This TPLF group is an organization which should be taken to court of justice for its involvement in the genocide. Not, we shouldn't give it any chance, any Tigrans, especially the Tigray diaspora, you know? that we are relatively in a free environment. We have to protest. We have to condemn, not protest, condemn TPLF, that it is playing the old tactics, that it is again subjecting the Tigray people to slavery and servitude, that it is trying, it is playing hide and seek with the public, with the Tigray people, it is trying to give a semblance that it is becoming a, an all-inclusive organization by inviting the very few chairmen of the uh, opposition uh, parties. But we know, we know the plot. TPLF divided itself into the military and the civilian group. It assigned General Tadis Oredin Sarkan to represent the TDF, the military wing, so as to give the people to fool, to, to deceive the Tigray people that the army or the military wing is being laid by non-TPLF members. Actually, these are these are the pillars of uh Tadas Oredets, Arkan, etc. We didn't we don't see any any change in their attitude. In fact, TPLF has become smart that it's becoming, it's sending us civilian, civilian looking TPLF officials, like for instance, it sends Sarkan and General Migbe because the public reception or public understanding of these two individuals is like, like they are not TPLF. But so far, instead of uh, what we hear is only a lip service. They, they may talk about democracy, they may talk about a new thinking, a new paradigm shift, a new attitudinal change, actually in practice on the ground. However, they are supporting their, their old organization, TPLS. Therefore, what I say is there wouldn't be any interim administration that TPLF cannot control entirely. Therefore, being aware, we should be proactive and all Tigrayans should reject any leading role that this criminal, uh, I think the responsibility for referring to TPLF as a criminal, this criminal organization is again gambling 
on the fate and destiny of the Tigray people. Thank you. Thank you, Abraha, for that. Uh, I think maybe for the rest of the uh, today's show, I just want to spend um, some time on your uh, idea, your reading of the opposition parties, uh, because I think there is enough uh, coverage, which was not there, you know, before, but we because of a number of alternative media these days, there is a lot of criticism against the TPLF. Uh, and um, that has been the case within Ethiopia as well. Uh, there is less discussion about the alternatives. And when uh, things change, uh, people find themselves in the same cycle of uh, anti-democratic, repressive, and uh, trumping all uh, kinds of human rights, uh, you know, in the country, in the nation. So, uh, Mehratab, what is your reading in terms of uh, the uh, clear uh, programs, as well as the uh, organic relationship with the public? Uh, in terms of the opposition, maybe we can go back to the pre-war and after war and the uh, reactions and feedbacks that we are reading now for what's happening in terms of Tugrai, uh, since uh, specifically Pretoria, even during the, uh, after June 2021, 20, uh, after Magala came under, uh, again under the uh, Tugrai Defense Forces. Merata. Yeah, thank you again. <clears throat> So, as I said earlier, <clears throat> there is uh, a push for these parties to, to, to merge and become one, and there is a reason behind that. Uh, I think most people don't see the difference between, uh, between these parties. Not that they, ha they don't have a difference, but uh, uh, I, I believe most people, they don't care even to check what programs these parties are running on. Uh, uh, so that's why people tend to kind of jumble them together and call them the opposition as kind of one party, not only once and tonight, but when they address them, they address them as one entity. And I think that is not productive. It is, it is very important to, to really identify who is who, who stands for what. Uh, this one is, in bigger terms, the, the responsibility of the opposition parties. Because pre-war, the, these parties are almost all new except the Arena party. Uh, and pre-war, the, 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 they, they had a very limited reach in in the grassroots level on the ground level and they they run into the election without having that much coverage on the on the Tigray uh, landscape uh, but then war came uh, and the war has forced them uh, I can say they were forced to uh, join uh, with TDF which uh, also blurred the line where where they stand uh, in regards to TPLF because uh, finally what we have seen is TPLF was leading TDF so uh, when 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 uh, the result comes it, it sounded like they were supporting the TPLF too that puts them in a very very weak uh, position I believe. Uh, uh, Somehow it might not be their fault, but there was still also a lot of chances that they could uh, uh, engage, uh, for example, the diaspora uh, to, to, to make their points and stand out uh, from the rest uh, and show what they stand for. Uh, for not doing that, they are now paying the price uh, being jumbled as as one party, uh, having very similar agenda, uh, they are divided only because they want power, kind of. And uh, I think th there is a lot of work from the opposition parties to to make sure the people understand 
what their agendas, political agendas are, and to reach to the wider level. I know there is a very big call for the parties to go to the ground. It is not very easy while we know the control of TPLF on the people to tell these parties to go work on the ground on Warada or, or Kavali level. I, I, I think we really have to understand the difficulty of that. Even though it's very difficult though, they still have to kind of reach uh, uh, to the people to the Warada level. Uh, the other Points they are failing on is their uh, presence on the social media. They are not uh, engaging the, with a, with a wider politically aware community. Uh, a few of them are, for example, Salsa Wiyane. They have a very good presence in social media. The, uh, for example, the, the TIP. I was asking in the morning on my Facebook page. To, to to see who is very active to to get information. I was looking for information when I come to this program and uh, no one was commenting from TIP on the meeting that happened today. Uh, uh, the other uh, problem they have is they don't engage the diaspora uh, uh, in English. I have seen a post uh, from one very prominent uh, diaspora, uh, uh, her name is uh, Housing Development. She was asking if you need to talk to the diaspora, talk to us in English. And she, 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 she was very right on that. They don't engage the diaspora in the language they understand. Not only that, but their reach is very limited. I believe they really have to work on the things that, that they can do. Because as I said earlier, what they can do on the ground is very limited, but what what they could do on the social media atmosphere is a very big. They are missing a very big chance in engaging uh, the the not only the diaspora but the whole Tigrayan who is on social media. They, their presence is very limited, most of them, except for uh, Salsa Yana. They, they are. I, I, I don't know if their presence is uh, enough to say they are very active, but they are comparatively the better ones that can reach to the wider po uh, population of the right. So uh, th there is a lot they have to do to reach the population. They are very, many, very much engaged in tit for tat with uh, TPLF, and I think they should leave that and uh, kind of... Uh, uh, very much focused on uh, spreading what they stand for to, to the wider uh, population. There is another very interesting uh, thing, the Salsa Wiyano also. They run a bi-weekly uh, book review uh, panel. It airs on TPM, a very interesting one, engaging one, that reached a lot of uh, the youth and the, the, the educated people, and uh, that would help them to kind of create a critical mass that, that is going to support their ideas. Uh, so in general, I would say the presence on social media also, which is comparatively much easier to, to what they could do on the ground, uh, is very limited. I think they have to start to engage uh, the people uh, uh, instead of uh, going uh, tit for tat with uh, TPL. Thank you, Meratav. Uh, yes, Salsa uh, uh, recently also has been held, uh, holding a number of uh, public meetings in Europe uh, through Haile uh, Kabeda, the foreign. Uh, affairs head of the party and uh, there were people who were criticizing uh, the opposition parties as you call them uh, the group for not reaching out to the public and the argument uh, the response from the party i read on uh, Heil Kaber's post was as well the meeting for example that was banned today by tip part of its of course objective was to reach out to the public uh, so 
there is this uh, chicken and uh, egg uh, situation uh, when people discuss these issues. I just want to uh, share with our viewers that uh, um, the UMD Media is part of uh, HBS. HBS is Horn Broadcasting Services. Uh, we are on satellite to Tigray and the Horn of Africa, among other uh, uh, media outlets, thanks to HBS, Horn Broadcasting Services, that's providing that service. And uh, I have pinned the link to uh, different ways of supporting HBS. Uh, in terms of uh, not only financial, through GoFundMe, PayPal, and so on, but also uh, signing up as a full volunteer. There is a lot of work to do under HBS, which is also providing virtual education services to children of Tigray, uh, and of course, uh, giving us satellite access to the zone of Africa as well. Uh, so I just want to uh, share that with our viewers. Uh, merci. Uh, Again, uh, focusing on the uh, political parties, the opposition parties, I just want to hear your assessment on that, given that you are part of the leadership of a movement, uh, Solidarity for Tugray, Independence and uh, Liberty. Uh, I'm uh, sure you are well positioned to look at which parties and uh, what kind of program uh, this uh, parties are running on, but also there are people who say that maybe to try what it needs now is not a political ideology based uh, parties, uh, but a, a national interest driven uh, movement uh, like that of yours. Uh, so I just want you to focus on the uh, opposition parties. We have uh, five, six of them. Uh, merci. Okay, uh, thank you. First of all, you are sharing uh, the picture of uh, Dorias Gadom, uh, the leader of the Asimba uh, Democratic Party. I would like to uh, share with his family my uh, uh, my concern about his uh, that he's in jail still after so many people have been released uh, with no um uh with no uh conviction uh without seeing any uh, without without going through any uh rule of law he is being kept in in the jail and uh, i think all of us should uh speak up uh for him to be released uh because of his arrest and other repressive uh, actions the asimba democratic party at this time is not um active uh, we can say yeah uh, maybe maybe Marcy, i think it's uh, worth mentioning i'm glad you mentioned uh, this uh it's worth mentioning that his crime his only crime was mentioning the eritrean presence in Tigray uh during the when everybody from addis ababa to new york un was uh talking otherwise so dory asgadom the leader of the Asimba Democratic Party. He was the first to speak up and say Eritrean soldiers are in Tigray uh, and were committing crimes. Back to you, Marcel. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Getacho. Sometimes I sit with myself, meditate and think about the future of Tigray. And most of the things that you see on the ground are may make you, make you feel hopeless. But it's when I see people like Doria Askedo and the other young political leaders that my hope goes al alive. They are willing to pay whatever sacrifice that comes for the people of Tigray. Obviously, Doria Askedo is paying it. The other political leaders like that of Mahari Johannes, and the others fought for their people uh, during the war. So, and they are still fighting under a very repressive uh, uh, repressive uh, dictatorial uh, government. 
Uh, with respect to the other, I, I, I hate the word opposition parties because it's an indication of the cultural challenge we have uh, that assuming TPLF is the government and the others are the opposition. Uh, that is, uh, that imposes uh, in most people this idea of uh, these other parties are there either to criticize or support what TPLF does, but are not there to uh, promote their uh, uh, ideologies and also lead the people of the ground. So I, I uh, encourage other people too, not to use opposition parties. As far as I know, TPLF is the one who opposes most of the ideas they come up with. Uh, for example, before the war started, the Tigray Independent Party repeatedly uh, uh, gathered the people and said that a war is coming um, uh, upon us and we should be prepared. At that time, the TPLF leaders were relaxed and were not preparing. I'm sure if the Tigray Independent Party was in power, we would have been prepared. So most people say they don't have alternatives. This is an alternative idea. This is a strategy which the PLF did not listen to. Um, with respect to their capabilities and resources, these are, for me, my heroes. Despite of all the challenges, despite of all the repression, they came forward and established the parties and are paying sacrifice every single day. They are being they are being fired from their jobs because of their political stance. These are like the rest of us. They have family. They have kids to feed. It's in spite of all those challenges, they are continuing to fight for their people. But the repressive administration does not allow them to reach to their people the denial of the right to assemble is one example the, the last event we are talking about but just to appreciate the the level of repression uh, i can give you one example one of these leaders told me they were uh, distributing brochures about their manifesto at some point one of the tplf leaders who, who was in the security side saw them passing by he turned around his uh, Land Cruiser uh, luxury car. They were walking on, on their feet, distributing brochures. He stopped, stopped them, took their uh, brochures, and slapped them on the face and left. So this is what they are going through. And who is there? Who are you to criticize them that they are not doing their best? Who am I? Have I paid this sacrifice? So, and these people, they want their own bread. They are not in politics for money, for bread. Unlike the TPLF leaders, who depend on their membership of TPLF, to have a job and to win their prize. But the political leaders of the small other political parties, they feed their own children with, their, the, with the money they earn through their sweat. So I think every Tigran should be indebted to them. We should respect them and we should help them. And we should demand the, the right to hear from them, to listen to them. And then if we don't like it, we can reject them. What's lacking is that opportunity to have that political discourse, to have that discussion. And from what I saw so far, people like us, those of us are here, we follow the politics closely. So we know who has what. 
I have seen the documents that have been released by every single party in the last uh, 10 years. Especially in the last two years, the strategies these parties come up with are has always been better than TPLF's strategies based on my assessment. Their prediction of situations has always been better than TPLF's. What I imagine is if they had, only if they had their political rights respected, what a vibrant political institutions Tigray would have. Who is preventing this? TPLF. So, yes, they lack access to the people because, let alone in the Waradas, in the countryside, even in the capital, Ma'ala, a single TPLF uh, uh, person can come, snap, snatch your brochures and slap you on the face with no impunity. For example, the person who denied Tigray Independence Party from having their right to, to have a public meeting is the uh, second commissioner of the Bagala Police Commission. He should be held accountable. Actually, one thing we should practice in the media, I really appreciate you, uh, Getacho, UMD always uh, ne uh, calls names and hold people accountable. That's how we should be. There are great people in TPLF. There are people who give their lives, who work day and night to promote the Gray Forward in TPLF. But there are people who, who slap other people, who kill other people, and who go and deny people from having meetings. We should call them, call their names, and hold them accountable. And from my, the information I have, the person who came with uh, civilian clothes, as a, as a matter of fact, and the other very, very uh, uh, unprofessional repression method is the way the security people treat the politicians and other civil people. Why would a person with a, a civil clothes come and tell you that they are a police and tell you to disperse from a meeting? If they are a police, they should come with their uniform, they should be professional, they should present their IDs and respectfully explain why. So what I would really ap appreciate, Getacho, uh, is for UMD to investigate how this happened and to expose who, by name, who did this. And we should demand for that person to be accountable. Uh, so having said that, uh, but what I would call for every Tigran is to know these politicians, these young, vibrant, bright politicians, they have their weaknesses, they have their failures. I'm not saying that they, have, they don't have weaknesses, but it's up to us to help them be successful. It's up to us to help them be better than what they are today. So when we point fingers on them, remember that. Ask ourselves, what did we do for them to be successful? What did we do for Tigray to have a vibrant politics? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Marcia. Yes, uh, we are. We are. We have been trying to reach out to the uh, leadership in TIP. Uh, that was uh, whose meeting was whose public meeting was banned today. Uh, so we have tried to reach to the chair and to the other members of the leadership, and we are also trying to get in touch with the police commissioner, security officers that uh, are named in uh, relation to this. Uh, event today so we'll, we'll follow that as you media media uh, Abraham, uh, i just want to come to you and uh it would be great if we can uh, finish it in sh uh, shortly so that uh, because we have a limited time on satellite uh so one question that comes again there were people who are uh, asking the same question here tplf with all the problems uh 
are discussed, you know, in relation to it. It has a base, it has uh, supporters. Uh, and the only way, the only way to know whether there is um, a genuine organic support in the public or not is through democratic elections, rule of law, all that. Um, having said that, uh, again, there are people, Mercy argued in favor of uh, supporting and nurturing the opposition parties because they are working against you know, uh, appeal and so on. Uh, what is your reading of in terms of, again, developing an alternative pathway for Tigray? Uh, specifically in the, in the topic we saw yesterday, today and tomorrow. So how do you see uh, the party politics landscape of Tigray playing out um, tomorrow? Uh, I mean, in the coming days, years, uh, and so on, uh, Abraham. Thank you. Uh, as I see it, the rise of a very powerful uh, opposition organization in Tigray is long overdue. Um, I have the conviction uh, that TPLF should have been made irrelevant in Tigray, in the sphere of Tigray politics, a long time ago. It was established, okay, for a different purpose, not to promote the interest of the people of Tigray. Now we have the small rising organization, you know, opposition uh, organizations they belong to the future. They have better perspectives than the rigid, dogmatic TPLF. In fact, uh, I truly have great respect for these leaders, uh, for an opposition individual to live and function normally in Tigray is like a plant trying to survive in a desert, in a hostile desert where the climate is too hot, where there is no water, but there is no nothing. But you see it anyways, a very tenacious plant surviving the harsh weather. It's just the same thing. These unsung heroes, like leaders of Wunat, uh, Salsai Weyare, and others, it's, it's very close to a miracle that they are still working, they are still alive because TPLF makes sure that they are starving to death. TPLF itself uses hunger as a weapon to punish them to death. I wish these organizations had the support of the young generation. TBLF belongs to the past. Of course, it has a wide network of the old generation. And the old generation only represents about 30%. The young generation constitutes about 70%. We know that it is firmly opposed to TPLF. The reason why TPLF officials disarmed TDF is for fear for fear that TDF, a young generation, a TDF leader, led by young opposition party supporters, would overthrow, would remove TPLF from power. That's why they first and foremost, uh, um, like was it last year, all the major operations of TPLF led operations into Amhara, Afar, and other up to the Gitus of Addis Ababa were fake. It was only to cut TDF to size so that it wouldn't pose a threat to TPLF. And it immediately, unquestionably, although the, the enemies were roaming all, all in Western Tigray, and South Tigray, and Northeastern Tigray, but the TPLF leaders 
who had no attachment, who I believe have no organic attachment to Tigray, to the people of Tigray. They signed the disarmament of the Eritrean, the brutal Eritrean troops were still massacring lots of people. What I would say is, what I would say is, the young generation, we should approach, we should devise ways to approach, to appeal to the young people of Tigray, to confront TPLF face to face. Because the last 40 or 50 years of TPLF existence shows the decline and eventual extermination of the people of Tigray. If this group still assumes power, still is the maker and breaker of life in Tigray, the people will eventually, Tigray may eventually cease to exist as a people and as a region. Therefore, if we can, we have to mobilize resources to support the opposition, the opposition leaders whom we urge if they can create a kind of a coalition organization because their rival, the TPLF, the so-called rival is merciless and giant and it controls, as Mercy said, all the resources that are coming from Addis Ababa from the federal government. These people are really tenacious. They are surviving out of just nothing. Tell us. TPLF make sure, like I said, that they don't exist, that it, it is, it subjects them to slow days, through hunger, through hopelessness, and through physical assault, like uh, the security official who slapped one of the leaders. This is an outright you know, embarrassment. This is um, an outright crime by itself. So uh, my hope, I pin my hope on the younger generation that TPL is trying to disperse, to scatter all over the place, to make them irrelevant like TDF. But we should try to appeal again. Therefore, TPLA belongs to the past. It has a wider base, but that base is disappearing because it, it belongs to the past. And, you know, it's a matter, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's inevitable that the young generation should snatch power, should assume leadership and never give and never sit and give their chances to the old past. Thank you. Okay, then thank you, Abraha, for that. Uh, as I said, we have a very short time left, but I think uh, uh, we need to maybe have one minute each to just share your final thoughts on the topic or on anything else uh, you uh, have been saying over the past hour. Uh, Mehratab. Thank you again. Uh, while I understand uh, uh, the repressive nature of TPLF, I think also we have to push for the opposition to do more every time we uh, talk about them. I also understand uh, how uh, uh, it's very hard for them. As Mercy has said, they are uh, making a life for themselves and their family while they are also fighting. It's not an easy job, but if, if they don't come out better and to do that, if we don't criticize them, if we don't push them, uh, we won't have a strong party uh, or strong opposition uh, force. The other thing is, I think we always should uh, also identify instead of jumbling them all together and uh, give uh, to the credit or the criticism what they deserve individually instead of calling them uh, the opposition in general. That will help to bring uh, a better performer out of the crowd. Uh, one more thing I would say is when we speak of opposition parties, uh, I think we are leaving other opposition parties out of the picture, like Ardena Party, uh, like the other uh, opposition parties who are residing in Addis included. Uh, because uh, when we call, when, when we talk about inclusivity 
and you deal with uh, three opposition parties now only, then you will find uh, th these uh, opposition parties that are left out of the process to be spoilers. So I think uh, we also uh, uh, include all those parties to, for, for, for a, a very uh, a better result. And uh, just one comment, I, I think our Hadesta is, is not uh, in party politics with Arena now. I see his picture being attached to Arena party. Uh, at least he's not in the leadership uh, position, if not completely resigned from uh, party politics, I believe. So uh, the, we, we really need to include all the other parties in the process to, to, for a better outcome, I would say. And uh, I would like to thank you, Professor Getacho and my colleagues here for uh, having a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Maratab. Uh, merci. OK, uh, I'll try to briefly give a, a synopsis of what our political parties' uh, ideologies are. Uh, Salsa Wayana stands for social democracy integral. That's their main driving core value. Uh, Baito Abaitegrai uh, promotes uh, indigenous uh, Congress type uh, political space or political uh, institutions, including Garev, Adabo, uh, and Baito. Uh, so it, it believes in promoting uh, indigenous um, uh, democratic systems or institutions. And Tigray Independence Party, the driving uh, value there is the independence of Tigray. But also, in the past, they used to stand for just for the independence of Tigray and not to continue as a political party once independence came. But recently, they have changed their minds and they, uh, their value is liberal democracy. So the reason I'm uh, explaining this is, imagine if we had a democratic space, these young vibrant leaders, they have different options for the graph, different options. And I remember once uh, Dr. Ben Carson uh, made a speech in the White House and he said, you know, our symbol is the bald eagle and the eagle flies with its two wings it cannot fly with one wing. So it needs both wings. It has the right wing and the left wing, and it needs both. In the United States, there is the Democratic left wing and the Republican, the right wing party. America needs both. For Tigray, we need the same different alternatives because when, um, when uh, economy stagnates, we need some liberal values. When uh, uh, income gap increases, we need some social democratic values. We also have indigenous great values that we need to nurture and cultivate. These parties have these values. If you are a Tigrayan, ask yourself, is it, is, it, is it not prudent to be a movement of, or a part of these uh, the, uh, political parties? If they are weak, it's because of your fault because you are not there to make it strong. I think that's how we should think uh, for Tigrayans. Thank you. I just uh, want to share with our viewers, actually, uh, there was a question as well. Uh, in terms of the keep, before I come back to you, Abraham, uh, because of, uh, or in relation to the TIP meeting that was banned today, the Tigray Communication uh, Affairs Bureau as issued a statement 11 hours ago, posted on its official verified uh, uh, Facebook page, where it says the TIP, the party, didn't ask for permission from the government. And it also gives a detail where the party indeed uh, asked for permission from the police, from uh, police of uh, Mahala city, the capital, uh, so that <coughs> They could get a uh, security arrangement, and the police told the TIP leadership to talk to the uh, Magala administration, uh, where uh, the TIP replied, uh, the uh, 
administration in Makala uh, is not uh, has no legitimacy, and uh, we are parallel in terms of when it comes to this. And the argument many people, based on the constitution and uh, legal framework, anyone who is holding any uh, demonstration meeting, they only have to notify, not ask for permission. So this is uh, the basis of the discussions that's going on, but it's words like, uh, I think, uh, uh, somebody uh, who is uh, following us mentioned that uh, this is the statement issued by the government and we are sharing that. Abraham, your final thought in one minute. Okay, thank you. Um, I think uh, what I would like to say is we members of the Tsugrai diaspora need to take one step forward to financially support the political organizations in Tigray. You know, uh, whenever we hear any form of repression, any form of punishment, as usual, committed by TPLF, we shouldn't keep quiet. We should issue statements, we should denounce such actions as crimes um, <clears throat> wholeheartedly. Because if we tolerate, if we see it with indifference, when the seeds of tyranny are being sown, then it would be hard to cut the giant trees that would grow out of this tyrannical culture tomorrow. We should, in the meantime, call on the Tigray people 50 years, half a century of brutal rule a rule that took the people to genocide is enough. We should appeal to the young Tigrayans, who, wherever they are, that the time belongs to them. They should never give a chance to TPLF because they know firsthand how TPLF gambled on the lives of the young generation and made it sure this tiny group survives to perpetuate the tyrannical, the continuity of a brutal rule over the remaining Tigray people. So the blame is not only on them, but also on the Tigray diaspora that we should financially back up because we don't have, they don't have these political organizations who have better ideas, who belong to the past, who can take Tigray out of uh, the this a uh, very precarious situation. They need to be supported. That's what I would say. Thank you very much for the chance, Professor Gidejo. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you. Uh, uh, the, I would like to thank the uh, panelists for your insight. Uh, there is less coverage on Tigray politics, specifically for international audience, for the diaspora. I think it was it uh, Mehratab who mentioned a very active Tigray and uh, uh, advocacy of human rights. Uh, she posted recently saying, if you want us to understand what you are saying and um, follow what's going on in Tigray, speak to us in our language, in the language we understand. So part of what the MED Media has been doing in terms of the English programs is to get uh, more engagement, discussion, uh, conversation going on outside media as well. Uh, so. This uh, panel has been great in terms of giving that seed and hope these uh, discussions continue in uh, wherever your platform is uh, as we uh, sign off today. We were online live, but uh, this will be broadcasted as well on Satellite Zone of Africa on Horn Broadcasting Services, which is uh, an umbrella of media organizations working as well in terms of uh, education for children in Tigray that have been uh, deprived of any form of education for the past uh, two plus uh, years. And uh, this was the H panel and we'll be back yet uh, with yet another episode next week. Thank you, Merci, Merata, and Abraha for tonight. Thank you. Good morning, have a good uh, evening, good day, wherever you are, uh, and uh, we'll see you next week, bye.